hello welcome back to another video today's video is something a little bit different but it has been roughly one year since i had my nose done i didn't have filler i had a full-blown like proper nose job i had a rhinoplasty um and i did vlog the experience when i did that video i was like no this is it this is one and done i'm never going to post about it again like however every single time i do like q a's on instagram i get asked questions about it i still get comments on that video now asking me questions so i thought why don't i just do like a one year post-op update and then we can park it there um so if you want information on like the surgery itself you want to see the process not the surgery i didn't film that if you want that kind of content that is in my rhinoplasty vlog very quickly before i get into it i'm gonna obviously give you my one year updates on my nose but i am also going to touch on um plastic surgery in general and just some plastic surgery chats because i feel like the more you shy away from these kinds of topics um the more unrealistic people's ideas maybe get when it comes to you know how they feel about themselves and stuff like that because people genuinely don't realize like how common um surgery is and that's not me saying it's a good thing that's just me saying i think we should be more open about it this video is in no way promoting plastic surgery if you know me if you are familiar with my content you will know that is not um my vibe i'm actually very like i'm pretty slap bang in the middle when it comes to um plastic surgery if you are someone who is going to watch this video because i'm going to compare my old nose to my new one one year on so you can see like this is pretty much the final result um well just under a year if you are someone who maybe is going to watch this video and feel bad if you had a nose similar to me before um and it's going to make you feel a certain kind of way please don't watch this video um i've said this before and i know that some people think bullshit if you really thought that you wouldn't have changed it but the nose i had before is a very 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 common shaped nose i look at other people with that nose when i had that nose myself and when i have my new nose and i think wow stunning beautiful adds so much character looks amazing but i just didn't like it on me my mum my nose was a mixture of my mum and dad's nose i look at my mum i think she's beautiful if diana princess diana hadn't have passed away when she did um i'm convinced that they would have grown up being doppelgangers because when i look at pictures of my mum when she was younger she like princess diana like yeah so yeah i do want to say that before i get into this video because i don't want to upset anyone i don't want to offend anyone and i don't want yeah if, basically if you're going to be triggered by things to do with surgery please don't watch this video without further ado and um, before i get into the questions we may as well give you an update so i have got some makeup on and i have contoured my nose but i'm not very good at contouring it so <laughs> make of that what you will um but this is my nose just under one year on if you're not familiar with nose jobs um you're looking at roughly one year sometimes longer sometimes less for it to properly 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 heal and factors that will impact that is things like how thick your skin is how quick of a healer you are i have very thin skin which worked in my favor in the sense that my nose has healed quite quickly i don't know it's like drastic changes month to month now they're more like super super tiny changes whereas i know that people with thick skin they see big 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 differences as it heals there's also cons to um thin skin i feel like people make out like having a thin thin skin is like the dream for a rhinoplasty but the downside to having thin skin is if any mistakes are made on the table you are going to see them because your skin is very thin my skin is very very thin so yeah this is my nose one year on i might try and put like in a before and after um like a side by side i don't know if i've got like a dead clip that's going to match up with this one but this is my front profile um let me turn to the side so you can see this is my side profile the one thing that i really didn't like before is i'm quite an expression person if you're new here then if you're not new here then you will know that i pull a lot of faces and i do like to smile i like to laugh and i really didn't like how my nose would pull down when i laughed i was very self-conscious of it and um, so that's one thing that has changed if i show you if i smile now hopefully you see it doesn't um pull down as much awkward if it does 
um, and then this is my other side with any surgery with anything you're going to get done your body is not symmetrical you will still have a favorite side um if, I, I know it's quite common for people to get a nose job and their favorite side might change my favorite side i think is still the same um but yeah if you're getting a nose job don't expect to love both sides equally because you will still have a favorite side no one faces symmetrical all that shindig but that is my nose one year on So very, very quickly, if you've not watched my vlog, definitely go and watch it if you want to and you want more in-depth info on this. But my surgery was done in England. It was done in the UK, which you can probably tell by the type of nose job I have had. Um, I had an open rhinoplasty and I got it done at Manchester Spire Hospital with Dr. James Murphy. I had two consultations. Um, I had a third one booked in. So the three doctors that I saw was someone called Dr honor in london i saw dr james murphy and then i was booked in to see dr silver i think he's called he's a very 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 in demand surgeon that's based in london um i did also inquire with lydia badia and charles east but they never actually got back to me so <laughs> that was that and i have a feeling they would have been very 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 booked up i think they've done like royal family people's noses i had my consultation in london with dr honor Gil gilliard first then i had dr james murphy's consultation in manchester and then i was booked in for october with dr silver by october i'd already had my nose done so i cancelled that one um because as soon as i met dr murphy i was like this is the man for me the way i'm going to speak about him is very very positive and glowing because that's my experience please do not take this as me promoting surgery to you guys i never ever want to do that but i do feel like we've got to give credit where credit is due because surgeons have a reputation for being very 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 cold and i did get asked about my surgeon in general so here is my review of him um surgeons have a reputation for being very 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 cold and quite yeah cold would be the word i would use to describe surgeons and the kind of reputation they get as soon as i walked in i was like at the reception thing in the spire hospital and i was then walking around because i couldn't work out where i needed to go and he came up to me and he was just like put his hand on my shoulder not in a weird way it wasn't weird but like he came up to me put his hand on my shoulder and he's like is it amy and i was like yes and he was like oh i'm dr james murphy really nice to meet you i'll be with you shortly you can just go and sit over there and straight away i was just like this guy seems really really nice and honestly a breath of fresh air i've had my boobs done if you don't know that already so i have seen i've seen a few surgeons in my time and by far the warmest least surgeon surgeon i've ever met in my life consultation went really really well he uses a simulation if you want to see the simulation and more information on that i did put it in my vlog so i will redirect you to that because i don't just want to regurgitate that video um but yeah those are like the main things just to bring you up to speed and my surgery was the end of september last year so we're coming up to one year pretty rapidly so question number one what was the recovery like how painful was the recovery if you watch my vlog I hate to say it but if you watch my vlog um i vlogged the recovery so you can see more in depth very very quickly i had a very uneventful recovery i had no bruising i swelled a little bit like facially but like i had no bruising um dr murphy on me didn't use like the tampon things up the nose so i could breathe like i remember the first thing i thought when i woke up from surgery was whoa I can breathe didn't have any pain they gave me paracetamol even on like night one they were coming in to give me paracetamol and i was saying i actually don't want it i'm not a fan of taking things if i don't need them i don't want to i feel like people take things like paracetamol willy-nilly i don't like to do that just a personal preference um, and because i wasn't in any pain i was like i'm not going to take them the only thing i really i did get is i got a couple of headaches throughout the first week but other than that i was completely fine the worst part of it is having the cast on it gets quite itchy gets quite 
uh, and then like having dry blood up your nose which like you're not meant to like pick at and as much as you clean you're gonna have like dried blood there to be honest and I had a massive one up like this nostril and it was not a vibe it was just not a vibe but other than that I had a very uneventful recovery however I do want to caveat that with saying that is not the norm and I do know other people that went to Dr James Murphy and had you know the bruising the swelling all that sort of stuff so it's definitely not the norm and I don't want anyone to if they're looking at getting a nose job go to him and think they're going to have like as easy breezy a process as me everyone's different everyone's healing is different um and to be fair everyone seemed quite shocked by how the fact that I didn't get any bruising um so yeah do be prepared most people do bruise most people swell really bad um quite a lot of people do find it quite uncomfortable but dr murphy did say in my initial consultation it really it looks so much worse than it feels and i would agree with that analysis someone same person has said i'm struggling to decide between a nose job in brackets permanent and nose filler um temporary i can't advise you on this what i would recommend maybe is going to see someone that you can trust to give you an honest opinion uh some people will fill your nose anyway even if they know it's not going to give you the result that you want so you kind of need to be careful um i don't really have any recommendations on who you should ask about this the main difference between the two other than the fact that one is permanent and one is non-permanent is the fact that you can only make your nose bigger with filler now having a bigger nose not a problem N literally literally not a problem however if you want a smaller nose and a reduction in size filler cannot do that so if that's your query with your nose um it might be worth looking into a nose job however obviously the downsides of that are it is permanent if that goes wrong although to be fair filler can go wrong and you can literally end up with like necrosis or blindness and um, there's risks with ev everything that you do but obviously a nose job is a bit more permanent so if you really don't like it um revisions are very 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 tricky they can be done but they are tricky it's something where if you're going to get it done you need to try and get it right the first time because the more you have it tweaked with and the more you have it looked at the harder it gets um so yeah i'm I, I can't really i can't really answer that one properly were you nervous to go back to places where people knew you and would notice the change um no because i knew i'm a nitpicker and i knew that two people that don't see me that often they're not going to notice the difference they might look at me and think oh something's changed but i can't quite work out what it is um but they wouldn't be able to actually work out of oh she's had a nose done um and everyone that's close enough to me and spends enough time with me to know the difference already knew so i wasn't really nervous about this um it wasn't something that worried me too much to be honest i was very open with it i didn't try to do it under the radar i mean it was literally all over my instagram story as soon as i woke up um so yeah there was quite a lot of questions along the lines of things like what were people's reactions like what do your family and friends think have you had a lot of backlash from family and friends just a little bit of backstory because I never want people to see the things I've had done and think my parents haven't done a good job or my parents must be like, my family must be super vain, like vanity project. And honestly, like in the, uh, <laughs> the best way of putting it is I am the ugly duckling, i.e. odd one out of my family. No one else in my family has ever even had filler, I don't think. I think I'm the only person who's touched themselves cosmetically and um, my mum and dad are not really pro it when i go to them with something like my nose my boobs when i've had filler put in my lips um they're not the reaction isn't good they don't have a good reaction they're not super laid back but for me personally i and i would be the exact same as a parent i don't think it's good to be surrounded by people who if you're going to say, oh, I'm going to have this surgery done, because surgery is such a serious thing. It's not a little thing, no matter how common plastic surgery gets. It's a big procedure. It's a big thing to put your body through. My parents are a lot older. 
they don't really get it and i'm glad i got the reaction that i did because i think if you're someone who goes to people around you with things like that and you don't get any pushback my memory card died um you know if you don't get any pushback it can normalize it a bit more and it can almost mean that you don't think about things as deeply before getting them done and before you know it you don't even look like you anymore you've lost what made you you and you might look back in years to come and regret that i think it's good to have people around you who will push back um against your decisions so yeah my family were not super supportive to be honest what my dad said about it actually made me really really sad his initial reaction was quite like angry which i get it like i get it i don't really judge him for it to be honest um and then i was sat upstairs and he came into my room and he was like i'm not angry i'm just disappointed and i'm really upset that we've not been able to raise you to feel good enough about yourself that you don't feel the need to do this and that broke my heart a little bit because my dad's raised four children i've got two half brothers i've got a big sister and they've all turned out not they don't have surgery they don't do the things that i do so the fact that my dad felt like he'd failed with me made me feel a bit sad because i was like i'm clearly like the odd one out here you're not the common denominator here your parenting is fine um so that made me feel a little bit like oh like i felt i felt quite bad but yeah um yeah my family were not like super pro it they're never gonna be and i don't judge them for it i i, I really don't i don't know about my extended family i never told them and i don't know if my mum and dad told them i don't know who knows to this day because no one said anything to me about it so i actually don't know who knows and who doesn't and my dad always says it don't oh, it don't look any different so apparently i don't look any different so that, the complex that gives you when someone you've undergone like a traumatic surgery and someone goes doesn't look any different ah good times yeah friends they were like a lot more chill about it which they're gonna be they were like similar ages they get it a bit more they've grown up in this generation they just get it a bit more the only real like shit i've got for my nose and like bad reactions is from people online which i spoke about in a like chatty video that i did in my car a few months ago and i was getting quite upset about it but the comments on that video did kind of help to make me feel a little bit better um obviously i didn't go for like the classic nose job nose and the reason for that is like i just don't think it would suit my face so i didn't go for it and like the issue that i had with my nose that i didn't have a I wasn't super bothered about like a massive reduction in size i just wanted the bump taken off and as a result because i had the bump taken off we needed to change the tip because otherwise it wouldn't have fit the new nose and it would have been a dead giveaway of very very nose job looking nose because it would have as a result been a lot more scooped out but the tip would have just not fit with my nose um and i've had questions from people saying oh why didn't you get a scoop why didn't you get a scoop out nose oh i'm really surprised you didn't get a ski slope nose why and when you get questions like that consistently it makes you kind of question your decision but ultimately i'm very very happy with my nose and the only time where i think oh my god have i made a mistake like did i not make a big enough change like is when i get those kinds of comments so the people who said it online are now aware and i don't really get people saying it anymore as much anyway i do still get the odd question and the people who have said it in real life have stopped saying it since i told them like you're actually really upsetting me and making me feel you you kind of like taking the shine off something that's been a really good decision for me sort of thing um so yeah that pretty much covers people's reactions and what people think but ultimately i got it done for me and i am over the moon with the results so yeah someone else has said a year on do you ever miss your natural nose not really to be honest like as with anything that you change about your body obviously i've got my boobs done i look back at my old boobs now and i think no oh, not wrong with them i actually quite suited having small boobs but at the time I absolutely like I felt awful about it I was so self-conscious about it and I know that if I hadn't have got it done I would have always thought that's going to make me feel a lot better sort of thing I will say my boobs and my nose have been a very different experience like my nose really has actually impacted 
my how i feel about things quite a lot whereas my boobs i, I went into it with really unrealistic expectations i was like this is gonna change my life and then it didn't um but you live and you learn and it meant that i went into this surgery with a lot healthier expectations um so i do look back at my old nose now and i do think it really wasn't as bad as i thought it was however i do prefer my nose now um on me i think this i just i like my nose now um i do look back at my old nose and think it wasn't as bad as i thought it was but you're always going to do that you're literally always going to do that so i try not to um get too caught up in it i really really wish that i could have put the comments i'd had about my nose and how i felt about it to the back of my mind and pushed through and grown into it and and grown to love it because obviously when i have kids there's a chance that they might have the nose i had before and i don't want them to grow up and think oh well mum changed hers so there's clearly something wrong with it because like i said i just didn't like it on my face it's a very common nose shape and it looks stunning on some people like everyone i see with that nose i think wow stunning but i just didn't like it on me so i do wish i could have done that but ultimately like we don't live in confined spaces with no access to social media we don't live in confined spaces where no one ever says anything nasty about your appearance um and unfortunately people will say sticks and stones may break my bones words will never hurt me i think that's a load of bollock we don't live isolated in this society from wider society and so you're going to be impacted by it maybe i'm just a weaker person because i gave in but i'm happy and yeah another question is can i breathe properly yes i can breathe properly i didn't have any breathing issues before he did say when he looked at my nose that i had a slight blockage of one of my airways but i never noticed that when i was breathing like i could never notice it it could still be there now for all i know i'm not aware i, I actually i <laughs> I actually don't know if it's still there or not because I never noticed it before when I was breathing. Um, so yes, I can breathe properly and that's another thing when, if you are considering getting your nose done, you really need to be careful because a lot of these noses might look super, super cute and you might think that's what I want. But if your facial structures can't allow for it whilst being able to breathe, trust me, it's not worth it. I've had so many messages from people saying that they've been to certain surgeons or places or whatever had their nose done and it looks great but they can't breathe and like as a result they wish they'd never touched it um and i can't imagine like when i get a blocked nose it drives me insane and i'm like i miss the times where i took it for granted where i could breathe properly so i can't imagine how horrible that must be well i finished filming this a while ago um but i'm just gonna pop this clip in here because i've just i'm watching a podcast and it's made me realize it's something that i forgot that i wanted to say um and it kind of ties into why I am so happy with my nose and why it kind of annoys me when people are like, why do you get sleep slip nose? Because I feel like, and by the way, this isn't me saying those noses don't have character. I'm just talking about fitting with my face. My nose still gives me character. My nose hasn't made me look like everyone else. My nose still remains a solid feature of my face and I quite like that. I kind of dig it quite like it um and another thing that my surgeon did say to me which again i just feel like he, he, he just advises people well um was i'm not going to put a child's nose on your face because it's not going to look right and when you're getting cosmetic procedures done especially things like noses where you're really it can really really alter your appearance you need to think about not just now especially because it's permanent like it's it's a permanent change you need to think about yeah what it's going to look like now but it's also probably worth um thinking about i mean to be fair you could get hit by a book you could literally like not live past the age of 25 so i guess you've just got to do what you want right now in this moment but for me it was a consideration how i'm gonna look as i get older and this nose is gonna suit my face through my ages if that makes sense because it fits with my face so i'd add that little tidbit in there and if you do want your nose done and you're feeling the pressure to completely change your nose into a super tiny ski slope nose to fit in with people 
but it's not actually what you really want you just want like a slight tweak just do the slight tweak you don't need to do the whole shebang you don't need to end up with the like barbie nose if it's not what you want you don't have to do it you don't have to do it there's nothing wrong with getting a subtle change not everything needs to be done to the extreme equally if you want to get the teeny tiny barbie nose and it's gonna look good on your face go for it you should all just do what we want to do and that's what i did so please no comments about the ski slope nose because i can't i just can't do i regret my surgery no i think it's quite clear that i don't regret my surgery um now i'm just gonna go over some general surgery questions how much filler do i have i don't have any filler in my face other than in my lips so i don't have any cheek filler i don't have any jaw filler i get asked on instagram all the time how many mils do you get in your cheeks none i've never put filler in my face um purely because the thought of putting filler in my face scares me quite a bit of right now no i don't have any desires to have filler in my face the only filler that i have had is in my lips and if you've watched my last video i got those dissolved and then i got a little bit put back in someone else has said is there any procedure you would never get um purely i don't like to say never say never do you know what i mean but purely from like a health perspective i don't think i'd ever get bbl it scares me it terrifies me i don't like to say never say never but like i really 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 can't see myself going down that road um someone else said how old do you think you should be to have surgery um i know in every country it's different in the uk it's 18 if you want a cosmetic procedure that's the age you have to be um i got my boobs done when i was 19 so i can speak on it from like quite a fresh over the threshold point of view it is my actual personal belief i think the age should be heightened just because i'm really not convinced i would have still got my boobs done if i if i'd waited it out a couple more years like i said i couldn't say that now and it could not be true and i'm you know maybe you know i would have still got it done but i do think i should have waited a couple more years so i personally would not be mad if it was raised to 21 but then i suppose it's probably not that fair for me to sit and say this because if people have got the same insecurities that I did at like age 18, 19, 20, I, I understand how much it impacts you and I'd hate to think that people are experiencing that for longer than they need to but I just think 18 is still super, super young and it's super, super fresh and I do wish when it comes to my boobs I had waited longer. Obviously, I'm only 23 now. I'm still super young but yeah. I also don't really think people really, especially with boobs, contemplate the fact that they're not lifetime devices and at the age of 18, 19, you are signing yourself up if you're going to consistently have them for multiple surgeries over your lifetime, having them replaced, taken out and like a boob surgery, in my experience anyway, it is not a walk in the park, that is that was the pain wise and i don't like saying this because it was self-inflicted that was the worst week of my life like i was not prepared for that at all i watched every single vlog every read every single thing people were you know out and about on day two like no one seemed to find it excruciating that i watched that was the worst week of my life and yeah it was very 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 painful it's not a walk in the park um do you think social media encourages plastic surgery slash impacts how we view ourselves honestly 100 percent, it definitely does and the irony of that is i am going to post this video on the youtube platform a social media platform and some people might take it as me promoting it but i feel like the answers i've given in this video it's very clear that i'm not like yeah go and have surgery like it's not going to fix I'll, I, I will always say this surgery cosmetic procedures if you have like really serious self-esteem issues it's like putting a plaster on a broken bone it's not going to fix the deeper issues it's just not and if you don't fix those deeper issues i can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna have one surgery um and then after that you'll be like oh 
and then you'll feel you'll get like the dopamine rush of having that done and then in a few days a few days time hopefully not in a few days time a few months time a few years time you'll be like oh actually I, I want this done that didn't make me feel better so this must no this is this is the thing I need to change I've realized it wasn't that it was this thing I need to change it's gonna make me feel better and you just go down a slippery slope and you keep going and going and going until you run out of procedures to get to be honest and surgery like i've said it's not something that should be taken lightly it's a very big decision to make and unless you really 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 want it i don't think it's something to flippantly make decisions on or like be encouraged um through social media about but so, yeah social media 100 percent impacts how we see ourselves i saw a tiktok the other day and i thought it's so sad um, but I completely understand where people are coming from and people it was a girl and she was saying something like Just being Being pretty doesn't feel like it's Enough anymore like the beauty standard is like Sky 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 so so high and so unattainable and that's like surgery aside filters editing which most people do engage in it's hard social media really can impact the way that we see ourselves i've actually done a video on photo editing so if you want to watch that um it's on my channel probably like a few videos down from this one um so yeah there's no doubt in my mind that social media does impact how we see ourselves the main thing i would say to kind of take the edge off if you want to enjoy social media um, and still use it a lot or you need to use it a lot for work like i do is make sure that you follow people that look like you especially if you are inclined to compare in like a negative way now we all compare and comparing is actually not a terrible thing to do um you can compare positively and it can inspire you but if you are someone who's prone to comparing negatively and your feed is full of people that don't look like you they're built com completely different completely different just everything about them is completely different they look nothing like you you're going to be looking at that every day and you don't look anything like that and it's going to impact how you look at yourself if your brain is that way inclined so the main thing that, the main tip i can give to like take the edge off social media is to curate your feed to people who look like you and if you are going to follow people who don't like you make sure you're not following them for their look maybe you're following them for their fashion sense or the content they put out is helpful it makes you happy not a negative point of comparison where you just think oh my god this person's so good looking but i look nothing like them and it, it it's a negative cycle editing and all that sort of stuff like edit everyone kind of edits themselves in the same way which by default in my opinion encourages things like bbls because everyone seems to have round hips i don't have completely round hips i've got hip tips i've been quite vocal about it and it's literally a part of my anatomy i don't care i do understand why people edit them because we've been made to feel like it's so undesirable oh god god forbid our anatomy our literal bone structure be undesirable it's like saying that to me like the hip dip thing i get it but i also don't get it i don't get why it's become a thing because it, i don't really like the length of my uh tibia i don't really like the length of my femur uh i don't like the shape of my shoulder bone do you know what i mean it's literally anatomy but because everyone edits themselves in a particular way it encourages a specific body type which can only be achieved by surgery or if you're going to edit editing so i do think social media does encourage um plastic surgery and i feel like because people only ever seem to share their positive experiences with plastic surgery they might like sugarcoat the pain or you know they might take an ad for a plastic surgery procedure it does by default kind of encourage it and promote it um because obviously if you're doing an ad for like a bbl or something you can't talk about it in a negative manner like you've got the surgery for free like there will be things in your contract that mean you have to sugarcoat things uh so i do think social media does encourage it personally someone has said my mum says if you have plastic surgery you will just have another thing you want to fix is this true for you for me personally this is not true however like i've just spoken about i think i spoke about it briefly in the last question you are using plastic surgery as a means to fix 
deep 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 rooted self-esteem issues i can guarantee you'll have one procedure you get the dopamine rush like i said six months you feel amazing and six months to a year's time you're gonna think actually that didn't make me feel any different i still feel rubbish and then you'll pick up on something else on your body your face something that you don't like and you'll think do you know what actually if i just get this one more thing done i'm gonna be like 100 i'm gonna feel so 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 good about myself you'll do that one and then six months to a year time you'll do the next one and that happens if you have deep 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 rooted self-esteem issues now i know that you could argue anyone who gets plastic surgery has a self-esteem issue i wouldn't necessarily say that's true it might just be a self-esteem issue directly tied to one thing maybe because of things that people have said or the way that it's portrayed in the media or, or something like that not necessarily an overall generalized trait that they have so it's not necessarily true for absolutely everyone that gets plastic surgery but i mean it's no secret Low, if you have lower self-esteem you're probably more likely to have a cosmetic procedure that that just kind of makes sense to be honest but this is why any good surgeon will screen you for things like that um they'll screen you for things like body dysmorphia and if they feel like you actually need some different kind of help some therapy they'll point you in the right direction and they will refuse you surgery unfortunately i do believe those surgeons are few and far between but they are out there i just wish it was more of a thing that like they absolutely had to do and maybe had to have someone else in the room whilst they did it to make sure that they did it do you know what? that's actually quite a good idea if surgeons had to have someone in consultations with them who isn't going to be profiting off the surgery to listen into like the consultation the interview and pick up on things that could actually be quite a good idea because then there's no financial incentive there I don't know how that would work but I actually think that's quite a good idea because that could really help surgeons be held more accountable for not performing surgery on people who don't need surgery they need another form of help sort of thing definitely is true for some people in terms of if it's true for me I was concerned that it maybe was but since a young age the two things that have really bothered me the most were my boobs and my nose i'm a year on now from getting my nose done i'm not saying because i made this mistake after i got my boobs and i was like i'll never get anything done again like me 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 and then i got my nose done um so i'm not gonna make the mistake of saying i'm never gonna get anything done again because i might change my mind i might something might go wrong and i might think oh i need to you know something could go wrong i might need a correction with something um and also with age i might just change my mind i might decide you know when i get to 60 i want a bloody facelift i might decide that that's what i want to do at that point but as of right now it's a year after having my nose done and i know for a fact a year after having my boobs done i was already thinking I'd say probably kicked in like uh, probably about after a yeah around the one year mark you start looking at other things i'm currently not doing that i feel very like content at the moment so i wouldn't actually say that's true for me that's not me saying i'll never get anything done again because i'm not going to make the mistake of saying that again so yeah that's my one year nose job update and just some chats some open dialogue about cosmetic procedures about plastic surgery because this stuff should be spoken about not just more in general but openly honestly and like from a holistic point of view not just oh i did this and it completely changed my life like really be spoken about more in depth rather than just saying i had this done because that just comes across as encouraging and promoting rather than just talking about a taboo sort of subject if that makes sense with all due respect please keep your thoughts on my nose if you think i should have got like a super super small button nose to yourself because i'm just not here for those comments i didn't go into my surgery wanting a super super small nose i went into my surgery wanting the bump taken off and for a nose that fit my face and that's exactly what i got but yeah i'm gonna leave this video here give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it comment down below so we can get a little conversation going and subscribe if you want to and you haven't already because i'm trying to get back more consistent i've had a bit of a nightmare of a few weeks i've just got a lot going on at the moment yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and i'm gonna leave it here one last little 
shot of the nose. This will probably be the last time I like directly talk about my nose job. Here we are, front on. And I will also show you from like a three quarter view from the side. 